Hey guys, Sebastian here. So in this video, I'm going to go through the budget needed to start dropshipping in 2020 with Facebook ads. Before we get into this, be sure to smash the like button and click subscribe below because I am posting every single day. Now that that is out of the way, I'm going to go let my cat out of the office and then get into this slideshow. Okay, so first things first, essentials. You need a domain, which is going to be $14 per year, and then you need a Shopify plan, which is $29 per month. The next essential item is custom creatives. I strongly recommend you get custom creatives, whether you're having someone film the product or you're just paying someone to compile a custom video with your logo and stuff like that. I suggest you get one to three. So that should equate to around 40 to $100. If you guys do need custom creatives, I have a website that I use. They sponsored this video. So click the link in the description. I'll give you guys a discount code for that. Um, they have sick creatives and I'll show the results of my store in a few slides because uh, the creatives work really well. So uh, custom creatives, 40 to $100. The next is Luke's. I strongly recommend Luke's. It's just $10 a month and you can have lots of reviews on your site. So total comes out to $83 to $153 for just the essentials. Okay, so the next thing is advertising. Let's just say you're testing with $50 per day with a CBO and one week cost is gonna be $350 per week or $1,400 monthly. If you're doing $100 a day CBO or whatever, however you wanna test, I just do CBOs, uh, then, that'll be si then that'll be $700 per week. If you're going to do $100 a day CBO, that'll be $700 a week and $2,800 if you're going to be testing a $100 a day CBO, that'll be $700 per week and $2,800 per month if you don't scale. So that is if you're not really scaling, you should have your budget scaled by then, but this is the bare minimum. Okay, so the next topic is revenue and cost of goods. That is what COGS means. If you spend $350 and you have a ROAS of five, you will generate $1,750 your first week. If a product has a 3X markup, that's $583 in cost of goods for week one, totaling out your uh, total total cost to five, six, seven, eight, around like $900, a little bit more than that. So that in itself is almost $1,000 just for week one. Now, a five ROAS is not at all expected. I don't expect anyone to generate a five ROAS their first week of ads with Facebook. It's really difficult to do that. I'm able to do it, but it takes a lot of time to learn how to exactly generate that much money with such little ad spend. So here is an example of one of my stores that I launched on the 23rd of June, and now it is the 3rd of July. So the first week of this store, I had only spent around $500 on ads and generated $4,500 in sales. So these these results were really good and the Facebook ads performed really well. I had a great structure and I still do have a great structure with my campaigns and everything like that. And again, this is all, I'm just testing this product. Like it's not like I had data for it or anything like that. And then profit was $2,700 on $4,500 in revenue. So profit margins are a little over 50%. So cash flow, this is the most important thing. So as I mentioned right here, cost of Everything expenses were $1,200 or almost $1,300, and I generated $4,500, which is amazing. But here's the thing. So Stripe, which is one of my payment processors, they held funds until July 2nd. It's now July 3rd when I'm filming this video. You guys will see this on the 4th or the 5th, dependent on when I post this, because I have to film two videos today. So Stripe is one of the payment processors. They held my funds and just released, I believe it was like $3,500 yesterday. So that was good. And then PayPal they hold funds on a new account until one day after delivery, which is why a lot of people don't drop ship and use PayPal because if they have 20 day shipping, they're gonna like take a long time to actually get their funds. For myself, I'm already getting some of these funds released, so it's not really a big issue. But the thing is, I had to spend all of this money, so this $1,275, that just came directly out of my bank account from week one, and I'm still funding the ads and stuff because, well, not really anymore because the Stripe is paying out, but it took around over a little over a week to actually start getting funds released, which that is crucial when you're just starting out. So the nice thing about having two payment processors is like most of my profits are just being held in PayPal, which I'm fine with that. I really don't need to pull out the money and go blow it. The only thing is I do need to scale the ads and I have the funds to do that. So it's not really an issue. But if someone were to be in my position and didn't have a lot of income or money just sitting in their bank account, they couldn't really scale, which is a big issue. It's just cash flow overall. So with Stripe, I'm able to get my expenses covered for every single day. And then I 
also have a little bit of profit on top because I believe my Stripe payouts are 60% of my overall revenue. So out of this, 60% was from Stripe and then the other 40% was on PayPal. So that's overall kind of a big issue is just payment processors in itself. When I started dropshipping, I didn't really know that getting the money from your like balance into your bank account was such a big issue and difficulty and it really is only if you treat it as a big issue or difficulty but when you can take care of your customers and have good customer support good relationships with your customers and supply or end payment processors and also have fast shipping times you get payouts regularly and payment processors don't really disable your accounts or anything like paypal i'm fine with paypal they are working with me and i'm getting payouts for them, so that's good because again, a lot of people in the e-commerce community hate on PayPal. So as long as you maintain a good relationship with PayPal, which how you do that is just have fast shipping times, reply to your customer emails so that people don't charge back. And then once people get their product, reach out and ask them if they have any other questions or concerns. As long as you do that, you can definitely use PayPal if your shipping times allow it. Okay, so the solution to having all these funds on hold, like I mentioned, is potentially getting a credit card because all of these processors will hold your funds for at least a week when you first start out, which that is the make or break of your business. So the first credit card I suggest, Chase Freedom Unlimited. This is a lower tier credit card. The monthly credit limit, I believe, is like 1500 or 1600 That was my first credit card and it was cool, but it wasn't really, like it didn't allow me to spend much because when you're doing Facebook ads and fulfilling orders, you normally have to spend, like if I'm scaling a store to half a million dollars in a month, I'm probably spending one to $200,000, which I can't do that on a Chase Freedom Unlimited card. So the second tier card is uh, Chase Sapphire Preferred. This is a medium card, uh, the medium tier. I got this card because I saw that I could make like $700 in credit card bonuses if I spent four grand in the first three months. So I signed up for that card a few months ago and got that bonus. And then the last one, if you're spending a lot of money is an Amex Gold Business. Reason being, for every dollar you spend on Facebook ads, you get, I believe it's 3X points back. So that is very beneficial because if you spend 100 grand, you're getting an extra $3,000 profit just on spending uh, like money on ads. So that is cool and that allows you to increase your cash flow. So all of these cards are beneficial for fulfilling orders and spending money on ads because this will allow you to spend more money and not actually um, have to worry about, again, like I go back to here, not have to worry about covering these expenses because let's say you generate $4,000 your first week and you don't get the money for a, another week or two. The credit cards will just allow you to spend that money even though you don't have it yet, the money will be coming in. So I don't suggest anyone scaling with money they don't have, but I do suggest using a credit card if you again are starting out and are generating revenue, but you do have payment processor holds. So the conclusion to this, my example, so right here, what I mentioned, I'm maintaining almost like, this is almost a 10 ROAS. I'm maintaining an eight ROAS every single day uh, when I'm just testing, like I believe it's on day 10 or 11 of this store and I've hit already uh, 10 or $11,000 in revenue. So that's really good. But that is not at all something you guys should aim for. Like, yes, you can, but that is very difficult to get to. So what I would suggest is be prepared for the worst case scenario. What I'm saying is break even ROAS or slightly unprofitable. So like I was showing you guys, I profited $2,700 the first week of this store. I don't suggest you guys base your guys' store off of those numbers because it's very hard to do that. So I, again, would say break even ROAS or slightly unprofitable is definitely fine for the first week because you have to figure out which ads are performing well. So in conclusion, I suggest the total budget if you are doing just the essentials is $150 just for that plus the ad spent and order fulfillment. I suggest at minimum a $2,000 budget, preferably more. And then if you have a credit card with maybe like a $5,000 limit, that is also good because then you can fund that first week just off the credit card and then pay it back once the actual funds come in from your sales. So that is the preferred budget I suggest if you're starting out with dropshipping in 2020 and want to get started with Facebook ads. Again, $2,000 plus a credit card with a solid limit because again, that will allow you to have good cash flow. Even if you have payment processor holds, you won't really have issues. Now the budget I just mentioned is definitely the lowest I ever recommend anyone starts with Facebook ads just because you again do have the potential to scale if your ads are working well and you don't want to ever have a store performing well and not have the amount of money 
to scale. That's one of the worst things that has ever happened to me. I've had that happen in the past where I didn't even have the funds when I first started dropshipping and couldn't really scale any of my stores. Now I'm in a position to where if I see great results, I can increase budget quite a bit, which is something you guys should definitely aim for. So again, do not start dropshipping with Facebook ads if you have less than that budget because it is very likely that you will end up having issues with cash flow and end up just blowing all of your budget. There is definitely that minimum and unless you have that, you will, again, probably struggle with making profits. One of the big things when you start out is if you only have a thousand dollars and you're spending money on Facebook ads and you are spending a hundred dollars a day, that is very difficult to consistently do. So the more money you have, the easier it is to let yourself spend the money and test uh, all of the products and ads you're testing. If you guys did get value from this video, be sure to smash the like button and click subscribe below. Also, if you have questions, concerns, or comments, be sure to drop those in the comment section below. But other than that, I will see you guys in tomorrow's video.